You're watching The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Angela Yee, Charlemagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. Empowered to the people. We have a, a special guest in the building and a friend to the room. Goes by the name of Larry Morrow. He What's came in on? here uh, with gifts, but not for me. Yeah, well, I see actually, Barney's bags, and I say, "Oh, I got a, I got a nice gift." I'm excited, <laughs> but I didn't see nothing for me. Listen, I'm gonna <laughs> open these presents right now, but let's do our introduction to Larry Murrow, just so everybody knows who he is. Cause I met Larry because we do these parties with him. I do my birthday party with him every year in New Orleans. Yep. And so we are doing that party. Me and DJ Envy will be there along with Tahiri, Rick Ross. I ain't Katie coming down. I ain't getting no gift. <laughs> it's not your birthday. Oh, all right. Yo, Envy, no lie. I was up in uh, Barney's looking for something for you, but I'm like, I know this dude, Bougie, man. I'm trying to find out what he want. <laughs> but but it, it closed. It closed. Like, I only had like 10 minutes to shop. All right. So I got a few things for And me. Larry also has a book out right now, All Bets on Me, The Risks and Rewards of Becoming an Entrepreneur. But let's look at my gifts first. Oh, man. So look, if you don't like them, blame Paris. Well, she's opening up her gifts. Let's, <laughs> let's get to the start. That's a shoebox? No. That stop. Was, I'm it, sorry. If you don't get your little tot ass. Uh, stop. Now, uh, how would you get started? Now, you know, we know you as a promoter. You promote probably the yep. biggest parties in New Orleans and all over the place out there and you, and you have the biggest guests and you stay loyal to the people that you choose and I appreciate that because you brought me down a, a bunch of different times yeah. so how did you start with promoting it's uh, in the book, I started by the way. at like 1920 mm -hmm. I did my first event and well, I made you just gave me the book 15 minutes ago by the way oh, okay. <laughs> I just okay. got it yesterday now nah, but um I did my first event I was like 19 or 20 and I made good money mm -hmm. so um you no, know, after I saw I, was, I, I could make money doing it, I'm like, damn, I can make money doing this and have a good time with my friends. Mm -hmm. So I started to do it, and uh, I saw how m the amount of money I made. And from there, it was just history. Like, I started Larry Murray Events and just started running with it. Now, you, you, you do a, a bunch of different uh, events in New Orleans. Now, is there ever a problem? Because you, you mean you bring people like Diddy, you know, I've been there with you with Diddy, with Master P, with Lil Wayne, with so many different people. Does the city ever try to stop you, or is the city behind you and try to help you? No, 100%, especially like being like a C-list market. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have a lot of, um, you don't see Diddy, you don't see Drake, you don't see you know, uh, Wayne, you don't see all these people every day. So me bringing them is like the city embrace it because we don't ever have it. Right. So so it's major for the city just to be able to bring people that they don't normally see, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, being a promoter costs cost you money. I'm sorry. I thought you still opened it again. <laughs> it costs you money. Now, how, how did you get the money to bring these people? Because these people are expensive. These right. Little Wayne ain't $2,000. <laughs> right, you know I mean? right, right, right. Now, I started off just building it up from, like, the age of 20. You know what I mean? I went through a lot of trial and error, uh, lost a lot of money. I learned a lot. But, um, you know, ultimately, I just wanted to really just, you know, do bigger things and, I saved up all my money to be able to do so. Now, if you see how this book starts off, Larry talks about gambling. Yeah. Right? And basically. That was a big part of my life. Yeah, gambling when he was very young. Yep. And how that whole mentality actually helped you. And also just being in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina and growing up there. And how the, that also helped you with kind of your mentality and your approach to being an entrepreneur. So talk about that. Yeah, so uh, when I was a, a kid, you know, we used to always shoot dice behind my best friend's dad's barbershop. Mm -hmm. So we used to shoot dice, you know. 24-7, it kept us out of trouble because we used to just be there all day shooting. And through the process, I became numb to gambling. You know, it's something that I always did. And, you know, we were best start off shooting a dollar better dollar as kids. And then it grew to, you know, shooting a hundred better hundred. And that right there just made me numb to it. So when I turned 21 years old, I started to gamble in the casino. So mm -hmm. for two years of my life, I started to just spend all of my time in the casino until one day I lost everything. Mm. So How I much was up everything? Everything was like thirty grand. So yikes! So at twenty, so at twenty two, twenty three years old, I lost thirty grand, and you know, right there, I'm like, you know what? I gotta start hustling. You know, I gotta stop hustling backwards. I started to, uh, you know, instead of investing in the casino, investing in myself. So I'm like, you know what? I gotta start playing on the game where the odds are more in my favor and not against me. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started, you know, to really take it, you know, up with Larry Mar events, and um, I'm like, you know what? Let me start investing in myself in the casino. I went from losing money in the casino to making money with the casino. Mm -hmm. So it was like bringing Drake, bringing Diddy, and that's when things just really started to shoot up for me. Now, you also talk about the first party that you ever did. You had your mom ha actually help you get the venue. And uh, talk, read, about, <laughs> talk about this venue, because the venue that you had was a very unique situation. And what I do like, and I, a lot of things that you talk about in this book are, are practices that I do in my real life, too, mm -hmm. just as far as building relationships and having people feel like they can trust you. Even, you know, starting a clothing line. You had a clothing line. That was my first start, yep. And you would go to these stores, and you knew these people because you shopped there already. And because they were familiar with you and they want to help you, 
you know, you were able to get your clothing in these stores. And I always tell people how important it is to really build relationships. If I, if I eat at a restaurant all the time, I want to make sure I know who the manager is. I know the host, you know, meet the cook, all of those things and support that restaurant. And that way, when it's time for you to do something and you want to work with them, they can say, OK, you know, we would love to have you come in here because we we deal with you all the time. We know you We have a kind of a friendly relationship. Right. So your first party was where? My first party was at uh, Crescent City Boxing Club. It was like a teenage event, mm -hmm. so I mean, it was it was pretty cool. Like, uh, it was I had a clothing line, so the clo the party was for my like a promo for my clothing line. So we did the party, and uh, you know we had like seven hundred people up in there. Like, as soon as doors open up, and from there I'm like, you know what, you know th this is dope, and that's when like I started to really do my thing because, uh, you know it was just like a a, a door opener. You know what I mean, from making the transition from having a clothing line to doing events. Now, Envy, when you go to New Orleans with Larry, does he ever take you out to eat at some of the uh, restaurants like Neal's and everything? No. <laughs> is it Neo's? I Neo's, Neo's. Yeah, Neo's. Shopping Neo's. Spot. I usually teach yeah. me to the shopping spot to go buy stuff. That's but, what he usually does. Man, no, look, Envy coming in the city, he's familiar with it, so he's always doing his own thing. But you know what's great, and I'll say this, what's that? and it is an approach, is that a lot of times we go to different cities, you know, the promoter books you, you see them at the event, but Larry will actually, like, take you around, take you places if you've never been there before or you're not, he not that doing familiar. that with everybody. You better stop. Yo, Envy, yo, look, look. <laughs> he does do and that. Look, I called June yesterday to get you a gift. I'm like, yo, I'm trying to see what... Uh, he well, I mean, oh, let me see my like, but, but June asked the phone, you like, yo, I hit you back. I'm shoveling snow. <laughs> hey, 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 we yeah. working, man. So look, so I'm like, I'm trying to see what you like, see what Charlamagne like, you know what I mean? But no, nah, I but one thing answer. I do respect is you stay loyal to the people that you do book, right. and you and your clubs always stay packed. And I meant to ask, what was your worst party ever? Like, what was the one that you thought was gonna be huge that was, Nancy was a brick? Over here. I ain't have a bad party with Larry, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't have one bad party with Larry, <laughs> so I'm good. It ain't me. Honestly, I can't even put my thumb on it right now. I can't really think of. Ooh, so look, ooh. so so Paris was like, you like gold? gold so that's where that come from. Sneakers. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. So I put I the receipt at the bottom. If you don't like it. I love it. You know, it's all good. So what was the worst party ever? I can't really put my thumb on it. I mean, the last. That'd you know, be one that you caught a brick and you was like, ah. What's the worst party? Man, I can't even put my thumb on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, I can't, I can't even put my thumb on it. Mm -hmm. You know, the last few years, I mean, everything's been going good. I've been blessed, you know, to be able to do all the things I'm able to do. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I can't really even think of, like, the last time I had a bad party, honestly. You know, I, I seen something that you put on Instagram a long time ago, and I respected it. I, I think it was right after, it might have been right after um, All-Star New Orleans, and, and you got a, a bunch of different bags. And you was like, I was going to go out and buy a new car, but I think I'll invest in myself. Yeah. And I respected that. So, what's what's next for Larry? What's next? So um, I'm not just a promoter. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people look at me and, uh, you know, he's a promoter, but it's bigger than just promoting. Like I use promoting as a, as a, a, a way to open up other doors. Mm -hmm. So um, I have Larimar Properties, which mm -hmm. I, I buy real estate and invest. And I also have, uh, you know, I have the book, and I also have a nonprofit. I have um, my restaurant that's opening up like this month. Mm -hmm. It's called Morrow's. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be. How like, old are you, Larry? I'm 26. It Okay, 26. <laughs> yeah, he's been doing it. For, it seems um, like he's been doing it for a long time. Isn't We've been that doing amazing shows to be so young and have all these different it. ventures? And your mom actually has a restaurant too. Yeah, my mom has a restaurant over in New Orleans on a golf course. Mm -hmm. I, um, and you know, it's called Lenora's Grill. So uh, that's kind of where I get it from, my entrepreneur spirit, mm -hmm. you know. Now, what's Morrow's going to cook? Because one thing about, I would say, Louisiana or New Orleans, everything, every restaurant out there is always packed. Like, there's lines out the door. <laughs> yeah. so what, what's, what's You always come during, like, big event weekends, yeah, though, Essence why. and, yeah. you know, the big event weekends. But um, what, what was the question? Again? I, I was like, what kind of food they going to cook? It's all oh, soul all right, food. So, yeah, now nah, it's going to be like New Orleans cuisine with a twist. You know, my family's from... Korea, so we're gonna add that Asian infusion into oh, Korea. it. Korea, yeah. Oh, my mom, my grandmother, my grandmother full Korean, and my mom, she's half okay. black and Korean. So we're definitely gonna uh, add that infusion into the New Orleans Korean cuisine. That's dope. Now you also said that your first party that you ever had a host for was with Drea. You was reading. Huh? Drea from <laughs> Basketball Wise, right? Yeah. And she talked about how that was such a great experience, and then you really built a relationship after that just because of the way you had so much hospitality when right. she came into town. And that's something that a lot of people can learn from right. you from. Yeah, so me booking Dre, it, it was a great experience, and that was my first time booking someone, but I bought her in town and, you know, showed her a good time, and when she touched down, she wanted to go get her hair and her nails done, and at the time I had a partner. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yo, look, let's go half on the hair and nails. It's her and her friends, let's go half. She's like, nah, I'm straight. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, all right, cool. So later on that evening, we went out to eat, me, Marcus, Dre, her friends. I'm like, yo, let's let's go half on the tab. He's like, nah, I'm straight. 
So I'm like, all right, cool. I, I'm going to take care of it. So at the end of Dre Stay, you know, just me being myself and showing her that Southern hospitality, she was like, yo, look, you should come out to L.A. So long story short, I'm 20 years old. This is right before my 21st birthday. I went out there, her Mercer Day, Jasmine, her whole crew showed me a good time, introduced me to people. And, you know, from there I realized, like, wow, this is what, you know, just being yourself gets you, like just taking care of people when they come to your city. Absolutely. So I saw the value in it, and I think most people, they don't value the right things. They value, you know, that, that green piece of paper. Absolutely. You know I mean, that green piece of paper come and go, but you can build solid relationships that can help you grow. You know what I mean? So and like the, her introductions aren't just, oh, this is Larry. Her introductions are, Larry, he's in New Orleans. <laughs> he has his own company. He treated us great when we went out there. Absolutely. Anytime you go into the city, you should call him up. But things like that really go a long way when mm-hmm. you're trying to build a business and be authentic with people right. and really treat them well. A lot of people don't do that. Not at all. And, and you'd be surprised. Like, no one would even think to do that. So when you read this book, All Bets on Me, and you read about how Larry just basically at such a young age got started. And he's still really, really young. But he's an entrepreneur, and he also is just a cool person. I have right. a quote on the back. Do you have a quote on the back? <laughs> okay, yay. <laughs> See, June, June got to be a little more responsive, Envy. Yeah, look. He's trying to get a quote. I said, listen, I'm going to read You got my number, Larry. I be hitting June because I know you be busy, man. You Envy don't number. respond. Envy don't, Envy don't respond to me. I do respond. No, you do. You do. Stop it. I said, Larry, and this is so true, though. Larry's the poster child of how you can be down to earth, a family man, and still handle business like a beast. And the whole point uh, that I was trying to make there is that, you know, when you do something with Larry, everything's going to be on point. The business is going to be handled. But he's still real cool, and he's going to make sure you good. Every time I go, I was with Seven Streeter one time. Yeah. And she's going to be there, birthday weekend also. Oh, you ruined the surprise. <laughs> oh. What the surprise is, you know, they got a few people coming. I know it's a surprise. Well, it wasn't a surprise, Mira but people really don't excited. know that she's coming. Oh, so I yeah. can't say who else is coming? All right, forget it. I mean, it. you can. I mean, it's up to you. I mean, it's there. All right, I'm not going to listen to I have a lot of fun. But a lot of my, <laughs> lot of my <laughs> girls are going to be out there, like 20 of us. Last yeah. year, last year, my, my picture went viral last year because I had my nipples out. <laughs> Remember, that was a picture. <laughs> <laughs> I wore the, the see-through sweater. And, and, yeah, yeah, it went viral. That was his party where I wore the see-through sweater. You know what? I was trying to be sexy. Sometimes things don't matter. My wife tells me to wear stuff I just wear. Right. <laughs> All right. Like All that right. cowboy outfit. Yeah, like the cowboy outfit. Well, last year, me and Fab had beef and we made up at the party, so yeah. that was nice. Yeah. yeah that's my dude. Yeah, I told him. Yeah, cool dude. Before he walked in, I was like, yo, you know Angela mad at you. I go talk to him. Like, I'm gonna talk to him. I'm gonna talk to him. <laughs> yeah, so we made up at the party. But so. he stays loyal. I tell you, Larry always books me, Ye, Kenny, Toya. Mm hmm. Toya, right? Fab, Ross. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. Those are those 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 are. Oh, yeah, right. that's, Keith his Scott, that's, that's guys. my man. That's, that's, Scott that's, for sure. that's those go to guys. But nah, yeah, man. Just uh, you know, I just appreciate the love that y'all show. So I always want to make sure that you know I continue to keep that relationship strong. Okay. But I would say this, like, just me being up here is, is big for New Orleans, you know what I mean? It's big for my city, just being, you know, um, an entrepreneur, not being a, a rapper. I'm not a rapper. I'm not a, an athlete, an artist, uh, 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 like an entertainer. Well, I'm an entertainer, but, you know, uh, it's just big, you know what I mean? So I appreciate the platform y'all sharing with me right now. Yeah, because, you know, promoters sometimes, and not that you're, you know, obviously you're more than a promoter. A curator. A curator, but they get a bad rap. Yeah. You know, like you see movies like Janky Promoters, and then you always think they're like slick talking people. Oh, there's people. a lot of slick ones yeah, out there, though. they get a bad rap. There's more slick ones than, than Larry Morrow. That's though. why you right. stand out, though. Yeah, absolutely. Look, me and Karen Civil was talking, we was texting one day, and she She'll was like... She'll be there, too, by the way. She was like, man, I don't, I don't even know what to call you, because she was introducing me as a promoter to either, somebody. Yeah. I'm like, she was like, no, wait, you're not a promoter. You're not... We got to figure out another title for you. So, you know, the title we came up was like a curator because I'm not just promoting an event. I'm curating something, an experience for the people, you know what I mean? So. And I love that every single year this birthday party grows and grows and grows. Yeah. So This year definitely going to be big. You know, it's definitely going to be much bigger. But thank you for my gifts. I can't wait. <laughs> my goodness. No, right. and, we going to be and, and Paris said you wanted um, buying Chinatown or something, but in Barney's they didn't have Chinatown, what so I got I? you something oh. I thought smelled oh, good. Oh, I can't wait to try this. I never this tried it. I love it. good, though. Okay. That's why I got I'm into it. it. Now, now, Larry, are you single? No, no, no I'm I not actually know his girlfriend. We all went out to eat and everything. Oh, I'm yep, just I have asking. a girlfriend. A lot of people, there's a lot of women <laughs> listening right now. Like, damn, he's, this, he's 26 years old. He has his stuff together. Let me try to holler. This nah, she cool. I, I so I gotta make sure everybody. The cameraman shaking his head. Cameraman, you want to holler at Larry? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. I it sounded sound like Emmy. Sound like Emmy was about to try to like. Would you, know you date Emmy? <laughs> see, see, they play too much, Larry. See, this is this is where I have to go. Well, Larry, I appreciate you for joining us. Nah, it's all good. We'll see you. Emmy, you a thigh? You single? I see you bringing presents. You know. No. <laughs> <laughs> and we want to be a kept man. You know what? Larry, we appreciate you for joining <laughs> us. Thank you. you. Thank you for the hospitality every time we're in New Orleans, I man. I appreciate y'all, man. And Put tell them the about the party that we're having. So next Saturday, we're having a all-black affair. Uh, Larry Morrow and Angelese all-black So black no affair. white people. 
all black, all, all black attire. I actually got an email. It was like, yo, that's racist. I'm like, yo, it's all black attire. Like you wear all black attire to this event, it's hosted by Rick Ross, DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Tahiri, uh, Kenny Burns. Who else? Uh, I all got, that people. Yeah, I got DJ Chris Major, DJ DJ Key Scott, DJ Papa, DJ Envy. So you know, it's gonna be epic. We got a lot of uh, people coming through. And shout out to Keith Scott too. Keith Scott's your, your resident DJ. He DJs all your events. I'll tell you a quick story. This is how I love. This is why I love New Orleans people. I left my <laughs> laptop charger uh, at the club, right? Now, if you know, if you own an Apple computer, you know that laptop charger is ninety dollars, yeah. right? Ninety dollars. And if I'm at the club, I would definitely have stolen DJ's laptop. But Keith oh Scott called me and was like, E, I know you got another party tomorrow. I'm gonna meet you at the airport and drop it there. And he bought it and met me at the airport. That's and for love. that, I'm always grateful to Keith Scott. Yeah, he yeah, he told me that story, man. That's dope. Oh yeah, because I'd have definitely stolen another DJ's thing. But like, got him. But That's I, messed up, Envy. I know it is. Now you should be a nicer person. You should learn from that. I, 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 <laughs> hey man, Envy's a nice guy. He always been nice to me. He always keep it. He would have stole a charger from you though. <laughs> <laughs> definitely would have. All right. Well, we appreciate you for joining us. It's Larry Morrow. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning.